What's up, everybody? Welcome inside our Champion Chevrolet NSN studio. This is episode four of the Jerry Lucas Show. He is Jerry Lucas. I'm Alex Margulies. Happy New Year to all of you. I want to thank all of our sponsors on this show. And our first segment brought to you by Key Acura of Reno. Uh, Jared, ha- Happy New Year. Uh, haven't had a chance to catch up since we got, got back uh, from the islands. We'll talk about Hawaii in a second, but uh, let's get to last night's game against Air Force. Great win for your team. You're 2-0 in the Mountain West. You guys have to be happy uh, with the way you're playing. Yeah, great start for us to be able to beat uh, Air Force. It was a good team, and they run great stuff offensively, and we knew that coming into this game. It wasn't easy to prep for 48 hours to be able to go against Air Force, but they run their offense at a high pace, and we try to do our best to slow them down. But once, once again, to be able to get a win in Mountain West play is never easy. So great job by uh, the guys. Yeah, I mean, is that a difficult team? Give some insight into what it's like to play Air Force because they run that Princeton offense. You have to be super disciplined on defense. You guys had a quick turnaround. I mean, to play on Saturday in Fresno road game then turn around and play Air Force on Tuesday, that's not necessarily an easy assignment. I think Air Force is one of the hardest preps in the conference. Uh, when you look at the way you mentioned it, the Princeton offense, but their ability, they run it at full speed. I mean, nobody else runs their offense as quickly as they do. You're talking about a guy cutting to the corner, uh, that guy on the wing cutting, cutting, cutting all game long, and they don't stop. You know, and when you think, even when we got late in the second half, they're running the Princeton offense all game. But that's them. That's who they are. And they do a great job running it. Uh, we did our best to slow them down and yeah. we were able to beat them. On the defensive side, it seems like you guys did a really good job at forcing them into taking bad shots. I mean, I think by design, they want to be able to move the ball around, run the clock, and then kind of beat you where you make a mistake. It didn't seem like for the most part in the game, you guys were making too many defensive mistakes. And they were kind of forced to run down that shot clock all the way to the end and then they didn't have a very good shot was that kind of part of the strategy to to slow down that type of an offense yeah well i mean that was the least amount of points they scored all year 54 points which was great for our defense to show the strides that we've made and continue to make all season and then with them we knew they were going to play at a high speed i mentioned it before but they're going to play at a high speed and we did a good job of slowing them down yeah and we had so last on the broadcast keith futures with me and, and he was talking about, you know, your guys' pressure and being able to get up. And you guys were really – it wasn't like a full-court press, but maybe kind of like a three-quarters court press on them. Yeah. What did you think that did to kind of slow them down as well? Well, you got to try to slow those guys down. Once they get in the half court, like we mentioned, they're going to run their offense at a high pace. And uh, we did a good job of trying to slow them down, but we also wanted to make sure we pressured early in the shot clock, pressure when you're on the ball. And once you're off the ball, you don't necessarily want to sag off too much, but give them enough space knowing that – Anytime a guy, there's a dribble at, there's a back door coming. So we just had to be aware, and uh, once again, we did a good job. All right, so you guys got off to a great start offensively, really race out. You had a 10-point lead, uh, then didn't have a great finish to the first half, only scored 30 points. We talked to Coach Neal at halftime. He was, he was happy with the way you guys were playing defensively, but didn't really feel like you were playing all that well uh, offensively. Second half rolls around. You get it going. You hit three threes. Keenan gets going. You guys both score more than 10 points. After halftime, um, what was that difference for you guys offensively to get into a better rhythm? I think Air Force did a good job of slowing, uh, you know, not only both me and Keenan, but I think the whole team down. And then I got to take a look and look at myself first, you know, being able to have a pretty ugly first half going 0 for 7. Um, but, you know, my teammates were able to help me in the second half. And then Keenan did a great job uh, st- stepping up in the second half as well, leading us to victory. How much does it give you confidence? You know, in that first half, you had four different players knock down threes. You weren't one of them. And meanwhile, you hadn't hit a single field goal from the field. And yet you guys are leading by 10 points. That must make you feel like, okay, I don't have to press because other guys can go out and score. Uh, go to show our depth. Uh, and, and I've been saying before, but Hunter McIntosh, I think, is shooting 43% from three. So you, when you have a guy like that coming off the bench, it just goes to show, uh, you know, and you, maybe your star players aren't playing up to their capabilities. You have guys off the bench saying, go do what they're supposed to do. And I think Hunter's a great example. And then Nick, who isn't coming off the bench, but Nick does a great job as well. And I think last night he had a really good game. Yeah, Nick, another double double, uh, second of the season, first game uh, on the islands in Hawaii. Take me through the mentality for you as a shooter when you're in that situation, you know, you haven't made a bucket, you're 0 of 7, and then that first shot goes down. I mean, what is that mentality for you? It's certainly not the first time you've had to deal with that. So I think being a veteran, you probably are used to it. But what is in that? It, it going on through your head when you are 0 for 6, 0 for 7 in a game. Yeah, well, I didn't realize I was 0 for 7 until uh, <laughs> you know I was told that at halftime. And you know, but that's coach. Coach was just pushing me, and, and I was able to go go in the second half and get a good start. But I think it's your mentality. You know, uh, for me, I always try to envision the ball going through the basket before I release it. Um, and that even goes to the night before a game. Uh, you know, before I go to sleep, practicing uh, my shot and seeing the ball go through the basket. 
Uh, but once again, I just think it's your mindset. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I was off to a slow start, and then being able to bounce back in the second half, I think it kind of shows my maturity, but my teammates did a good job of setting me up, as well as our coaching staff. Uh, Coach Neal kind of made an emphasis, tried to give me the ball early, and I was able to knock down shots. You got off to kind of a slower start, at least from the three, early in the season, maybe the first five, six, seven games. Yeah. You weren't shooting the ball maybe as well as you'd like to. Fresno, you were perfect you know, last night. Started slow, but then you still hit three in a row from beyond the arc. What, is there a difference for you that it's been, or is it just a matter of getting shots up and then you get into a groove as a shooter? I think it was slowing the game down. I think I put a lot of pressure on myself um, to you know, get to the goals that I set out for, for myself and, and our team. I think I just put a little bit too much pressure on myself. I'm starting to let the game come to myself. And when you look at uh, our whole roster, uh, you know, we have plenty of guys that can do – a variety of things, right? And I mentioned Hunter's a great example, but being able to have guys like Hunter come off the bench helps me out and helps space the floor. And then when you have a guy like Keenan who draws mm -hmm. so much attention on the offensive end, helps create open looks for me. Uh, so I was able to get going. And once again, you know, hopefully I can uh, keep going the rest of the year. All right. Uh, we got a lot still to come here on the Jared Lucas Show. Uh, we're going to have Keenan Blackshear in the studio. It's going to be a lot of fun to have him. We're going to chat with him. We're also going to play a game, Two Truths and a Lie. So we'll get to know you guys uh, a little bit better uh, before we move on to that, I do want to talk to you a little bit more about Hawaii. And we didn't get a really chance to kind of put a bow around uh, your experience out there. I know we uh, taped the Jerry Lucas show from the islands, and but it was before you guys had won the Diamond Head Classic. I guess take me through the end of the tournament, being able uh, to kind of put that stamp on a tournament win um, and being able to do it in a place that has a, a ton of meaning for you personally and, and for your family. Uh, once again, it's cool for us and the guys to be able to beat two Power 5 teams. And it's never easy to win a championship. And be able to win a championship beating TCU, a really good team, who the other night uh, almost knocked off Kansas. Uh, to be able to beat them and beating Georgia Tech, an ACC team, was great for us. And then when you look back at you know my roots at, at, to Hawaii and then also my dad playing at the University of Hawaii, it was great for me uh, to be able to do it uh, where my dad played at. And, you know, my dad never gets emotional either, but uh, you know, <laughs> after the game, you know, he had, you know, he was pretty emotional, probably had a That's tear awesome. or two in his eyes. You know, just he played in the same tournament uh, that we played in uh, 37 years ago. And it wasn't, I think it was a Rainbow Warrior Classic. Now it's the Diamond Head Airline, or the Diamond Head Classic. Yeah. So he played in the same tournament uh, 37 years ago, or whenever it was, 35 years ago. And then to be able to see me uh, do it and my team be successful, it was pretty cool for him. Yeah, I was going to say, we met your dad, got, got him on the show last week. He does seem like a pretty stoic guy. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So to see some emotion, I'm sure that was pretty cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't see it very often. I remember seeing it in my senior year of high school when it was uh, his last time coaching me. Um, you know, he teared up a little bit. I did yeah. too. Uh, but this is probably one of the few times I've seen him uh, be pretty emotional. And then to be able to hear, I don't think my dad ever told me that he, this tournament uh, he played in. Wow. It was just a different name. Um, so, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right. Uh, lots still to come here on Episode 4 of the Jared Lucas Show. Again, this segment brought to you by Key Acura of Reno. Coming up next, Keenan Blackshear is going to join the program. We're going to talk to him about those paddles. <laughs> that was a pretty cool uh, all-tournament team gift. So we'll get into that and... Uh, getting a chance to catch up with his family uh, on the islands as well. Much more to come, plus a matchup looming against Boise State on Friday. Should be a good one at Lawler Event Center. All right, we are back on the Jared Lucas Show, Legends Bay Casino Lounge, powered by Circus Sports. Sponsor of this segment is Bradley Drendel and Janae. Certainly appreciate their support of this program. As promised, Keenan Blackshear joining us in studio, and I was just kind of teasing before we went to break the paddles yeah, yeah. for the Diamond Head Classic. I know when you grabbed that, you were like, oh, this is pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a nice gift that they gave us, uh, well-deserved, yeah. What word did you put it? Uh, actually, I gave it to uh, Coach, really. Did you? Yeah. Coach uh, Offord? Yeah, I just gave it to Coach. He doesn't need any more memorabilia. Hey. That would be something cool. I know Coach was a big fan of it, so <laughs> I know he'll probably, he'll probably find a nice place for it. What, what was it like to share the moment that both of you guys made the all-tournament team? And I know you, Jared, you were very quick to say, like, we should have been co-MVP because it was so even as to how impactful you guys were for the team. Yeah, I mean, Keenan had 30 in the championship game. Uh, so, it's once again, it's never easy to score 30 in the college basketball game and be able to do it in the championship and do it the way he did it, uh, leading us, really leading us all the way down the final stretch. Yeah. Because Georgia Tech kept on, you know, trying to tighten up the game. Keenan did a good job of finishing the game. Um, once again, yeah, I mean, if there was a way to co-MVP, it should have been co-MVP, seriously. Uh, and I mean, but that's just key. You're saying no, Key? No. Uh, in our interview, uh, I didn't know at the time 
it was an MVP because I didn't hear it because a lot of things was yeah, going on. Yeah, there's a lot on. going on. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, Jared really carried us throughout the whole tournament. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and, you know, I'm a, I'm a Jared Lucas fan, so, yeah. Biggest Jared Lucas fan on the, t- on the whole team? Facts. Facts. All right, we're going to get to true truth, truth, and a lie. I wonder if that's on the true tr- two truths and a lie <laughs> that you're the biggest Jared Lucas fan. All right, uh, in Hawaii, uh, you guys had a chance to play. All, we talk about the Power Five teams, right? TCU, you get to yes. play Georgia Tech. You yes. get to play some really uh, big caliber teams. What was that feeling for you, Key? I mean, you know, you're from Florida. You yeah. know, we, we talk West Orlando, right? Yeah. Georgia Tech, like that's right. That's kind of in your backyard a little bit. I mean, Atlanta's not yeah. right there, but it's close. I mean, that's a, a school you probably grew up looking at. So to be able yeah. to beat Georgia Tech, that must have been pretty special. And the fact your sister plays there, yeah, that's got to give you a little black shirt bragging rights, right? Uh, yeah. Uh, well, my sister just wanted me to just go out there and have fun. And anytime I can just perform in front of my family that I haven't seen in a while is a blessing to me. Uh, I really love family. I just tight knit uh, group that I I come from, and yeah, it was great. But I definitely got the bragging right. For <laughs> I sure. was I was telling I was telling Key when he goes back or. If he goes back to Georgia Tech, whatnot, but her sister, you know, you're gonna have to, right? You're gonna go check out one of her games at some point. He might have to, but all, every single one of those Georgia Tech players gonna have to put some respect on his name because <laughs> he gave him thirty. They better look at him the right way too. Like, oh, that's Keenan Black here. <laughs> oh, he yeah. dropped thirty on us. <laughs> uh, I think she was even. I think I oh, maybe overheard her talking like that. She's got now. She's like, hey, I got bragging rights back at Georgia Tech. To be like, yeah. yo, my family did that. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. pretty cool, right? Yeah, they didn't. They didn't like that she was cheering for me at the game. But hey, <laughs> come on now. How, how cool is it for you and your sister to be both playing college basketball? I mean, there's not very many sibling duos that are doing it and doing it at the level that you guys are. I think she's all, also averaging about ten points a game. So yeah, she's she's playing good. Uh, she always just as a big brother, she always just asks me things about just like college and how I should just go about things of that nature and. So, like, I just tell her, like, just keep going, and, like, I'm just proud of her, really. Uh, she overcame a lot uh, that year that she went to uh, Alabama, and she was just trying to figure out, figure things out for, her, for herself for the first time ever. And you know how it is as a college student, being away from home and just don't, don't know what to do and things of that. And she's just calling me, just asking me questions of, of that nature, like, asking, like, about transferring and, like, how that whole process goes, and like, I just felt like a good big brother. That's cool. Like, just giving her advice and things of that nature. All right, is there any part of her game that you wish you had? Hmm. Anything you see that you're like, dang, she actually maybe is a little bit better than me at this. I feel like she's, I feel like she's better than me. Uh, more, Period. But more, yeah, yeah. I always like to put her on that pedestal, of just being the best in the family, really, and just like, she's. I don't know, because we're both versatile, but, like, I feel like she's very versatile. Like, she's a double-double machine. Dang. And she's, like, a she's a, a loving person. Like, like you got to love her, like, to be around her. So, like, being a leader, like, I feel like that's good for her teammates and stuff like that, just seeing how they inter- interact with her when she's there. All right, so your dad came to Seattle. I think you have an uncle yes. that maybe lives out there. You yes. dropped 31, I think, in yes. Seattle. You guys beat Washington. Then your dad, your whole family shows him Hawaii. You score 30 points against Georgia Tech. Can we just get the, someone from the Blackshire family like, to come to every game? Because it seems like you take your game up a notch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to put it like that, but it, it is definitely like. It feels different, though. You have to have like, a different level, right, when yeah, your family's like, there. Definitely, uh, really. My, I barely get to see my parents, really. Uh, they're all the way in Florida. And they be just trying to come to every game. I'm just used to my parents being at every game because they're just like growing up, I always seen at least one of them in the uh, crowd and just hearing my mom e- either scream or seeing my dad in the corner just looking at me, just like nodding his head, no, and some <laughs> of the things I do. But, yeah, like it's always good to have family. I feel like you're way more comfortable. All right. Uh, I know, Jared, you, we'll talk about this on a future episode because we have a lot more uh, episodes to go, but you have a brother that plays volleyball. Yeah. Yep. In college, so you actually are a sibling duo in yep. college sports, yep. also a little different, but yeah. 
All right, we'll, we'll get deeper into that uh, on a future episode. But coming up, I do want to talk about the next game against Boise State. Also, just about the Mountain West right now as a whole. I know you, you guys were kind of talking about it off camera. We'll get your thoughts on the Mountain West right now. We'll continue on with more of the Jared Lucas Show right after this. All right, the Jared Lucas Show rolls on. Keenan Blackshear, Jared Lucas joining us here for episode four of the program. You can find more of our shows, NevadaSportsNet.com. Mountain West play, you guys are 2-0 and to start things, but this thing is going to be a gauntlet. Uh, we were talking off camera about what happened last night. You had Boise State beating Colorado State. They've lost two in a row yeah. after being ranked uh, San Diego State. They had a scare uh, against San Jose State, New Mexico uh, losing as well. I mean, this thing's going to be a gauntlet, isn't it? Yeah. Well, it's, it's not going to be easy to win road games, I can tell you that. And you take a look, like you just mentioned, number 17, Colorado State, plays back-to-back -back road games in the, top, in the upper half of our conference, playing Boise State, uh, losing a tough one the other night. And then uh, who they play? Utah State. And then losing a tough yeah. one the other night to Utah State. It's not going to be easy to win on the road, and it's not going to be easy to win at home either. But like I said, even harder on the road. Keenan, how much do you like actually catch up? Do you sit and watch other games like just yeah. as a fan and, and even well, just to be able to get a better understanding of who you're going to be playing? Uh, definitely, yeah. Like just you'll probably just see a set that they run and like in game time you'll see it like the formation, like an out of bounds play or something like that. So you just have like the higher IQ at that point saying, oh, it's a stagger or a get or a get screen or a chess action, something like that. Like you just you take a lot from that. Really? And you guys actually will like get together yeah. as groups on the team, and you guys will just watch hoops, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jared's house. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we do it every any time we got a uh, off day or maybe some time after practice where we got enough time to go watch a game. That's yeah, awesome. We'll do it. I'm, I could imagine Saturday, uh, you know, since we play on Friday right, night, we'll right. be, able, be able to watch a couple games Saturday. So we'll see. All right, let's talk about uh, what we're gonna have this Friday night. I'm gonna say it right here too. This thing better be a sellout. Oh, we, I, we had we had a good we had a good crowd against Air Force. It was a good crowd for a Tuesday night. Yeah. If that place isn't packed on Friday night, there's something wrong because you've got a 15 and one Nevada team taking on Boise State, who just beat a ranked team in Colorado State, and you guys are going to need a sellout crowd yes. on Friday night, right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. We need a sellout. If I could go to like uh, every single camera or every <laughs> single person and tell them we need you there, me, both me and Key, our team. <laughs> The university, we need you there. We need a sellout. We're due. We're 15 and one. Yep. We're playing good basketball. We need you guys. It's time to show right. out, right, Key? <laughs> Facts. Uh, you just gotta love just everybody in the arena, just sitting on top of you, really, and just screaming at the top of their lungs. It's, it's like, a special feeling, isn't it? Oh, it's like, like if you're not ready for that, I don't know. Like, you, it's something wrong with you at that point. All right, Boise State. Last year, you guys split with them in the regular season. They beat you in Boise. You guys played them to open the Mountain West Conference season last year. Here's some highlights of that. It was a tight game that came down to literally the last shot. Keenan, you hit uh, the final bucket, uh, got to the basket, scored, and then you guys were able to get a stop there. Uh, Keenan, what do you remember uh, about the end of that game? Uh, really my get-back game. Uh, the year before, I missed, missed the, uh, I missed the uh, game winner in the conference championship and, like, I felt like it just drove me that whole summer really just to be better and just I want to beat them. And, yeah, it's still the same feeling now. Like, they have the last win. And like, mm -hmm. kind of want that back now. Jared, take me about Boise Stadium. You play them a ton. You know these guys, right? Dagenhart, Rice. What stands out to you about this matchup and playing these guys? Oh, uh, they got a lot of depth. They had an Omar Stanley from, uh, I think he's from St. John's. I, think, I don't know how much he's averaging, but the other night he had a pretty good game. And then Max Rice, uh, I think a couple nights ago, he had 28 or, or something like that. Uh, Max Rice can really shoot the ball. Tyson Dagenhart uh, was, could have been the preseason player of the year, too. So, uh, and then Chibuzo Agbo, I think he's shooting 46% from three, something really crazy. So we got to do our best to slow them down. They're a really good team. They have a lot of depth. I think they're similar to us. Uh, we got a bunch of guys that are old veterans, so we got to do our best to slow them down. And as you guys said, the road in the Mountain West is going to be a gauntlet. Taking care of home, Facts. like that's, that's going to separate who wins a championship yeah. versus who doesn't, right? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. All right, so it's going to be a good one. Friday nights, Nevada, Boise State's MyNevadaTickets.com. Get you out there. Let's get this thing sold out. All right, Please. coming up next, we're going to wrap up the show. Two truths and a lie. I've got a couple things. We're going to see how well... Uh, these two teammates know each other. Wrapping up the show right after this. Be tough. 
All right, wrapping up the Jared Lucas Show. Keenan Black's here, our guest this week. This segment brought to you by Wolfpack Moving. You see the commercial, Jared as well, helping them move things around. That was a lot of fun to do. We're going to dive into two truths and a lie. We're going to start. Uh, these are uh, Keenan answer these questions, Jared. You're going to see if you can pick okay. out what is the lie. All right. But the first thing is he said, I went to Spain. I love eating Chinese food. And I only eat green gum. What is the, what are the, what's the lie? Okay, I know things? the truth is he only eats green gum. Okay. See, he's slimy K. Let's see, you have gum uh, in your mouth right now. Yeah. He's got the green gum, all right. That's the truth, yep. I know that's the truth. Okay. Uh, Chinese food, I don't know. Spain, I feel like he could have been to Spain with his brother or sister. Maybe his, maybe his brother played out there. Uh, I'm gonna, you know what, I'm going to go into Spain one. Spain is what? That, that's the lie. The, no, that's you wrong. I knew he it. Has, you been to Spain? Yeah. What'd you uh, go there for? Uh, my dad played professional. When I, I was knew younger. it. Dang. I knew it. You don't like Chinese something food? Something with basketball. I hate Chinese. You hate Chinese? I, food? You like, don't like not even like orange chicken? What a passion. Come like, on. I, I you don't eat like it. panda? Nothing. I, I eat Fried panda. rice? Fried rice? I hate Nothing? it. Nothing? I hate it. I hate Egg it, rolls? It, it's solid, but like. I wow. won't. I won't try to eat it. Like Dang. that's a bad look for me. That's all right. Me. All right. I knew. Got, I knew he'd been. All right. In Spain. So, J- Jared uh, Keenan, you got a chance to win the game here. Here's Jared's questions. Okay. okay. Uh, he goes. He has. I can't. Is this four siblings? No. Okay. Two. Okay. Ha- he said, "I have two siblings. He eats red meat and won a Pac-12 championship. He won a Pac-12 and he does eat red meat. I think the first one is a lie." Yeah, he's right. Yeah. Okay. That was too easy. Let's Come get on, to the other. Let's try the other one. All right. Uh, favorite color is green. Only wear Trey Young on the court. Thighs 13 shoe. He does only wear Trey Young. Correct. Uh, favorite color is green or why is wear size 13 shoe? We only got 10 seconds left. I don't think he likes the color green. That's correct. Keena Blackshear has won this week's game. Keenan, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Jared. See you guys in two weeks here on The Jared Lucas Show. <laughs>